welcome to my 2021 end of year book wrap up. I have hit my Goodreads goal of 300. So I am done for the year. I know that there is still more time in the year I could read more books, but I really want to dedicate time to other things. I also have two big announcements in this video. So before we get into my end of year wrap up, I'm just going to tell you, I won't like hold you in suspense. But the first announcement is I am leaving booktube. So I have had so much fun. This has been the greatest community. Everybody is super nice. I've loved connecting with everyone. And this kind of goes into my second announcement, but I really just need more time to write. So I put out, I think two books this year. I don't even know. I don't know how many books I put out. And for this last month without doing any reading, uh, I was able to write 18,000 words. So it is like the best word count month I've had all year. And I think that's largely because I wasn't focused on on YouTube and I also wasn't focused on reading books and so I don't think it was a bad use of my time at all um, but I do want to spend more time next year writing books and I can't do that if I am running two YouTube channels so I am going to be giving this channel up however I will still be posting here for book club and yes I will still be running book club all year with Courtney I actually love book club like it is like a super fun thing. You know how in school, like you can join a club, like you can join newspaper or you can join the cheerleading team or you can join, you know, um, I don't even know. There's like so many like chess club or whatever. This is like the funnest book club that I like for my extracurricular activities, like outside of like mainstream life that I love doing. So I will be continuing to run Cozy Escape with Courtney. We will also continue running Patreon the entire year of 2022. So I'm very excited about all the cool things going on in there. Now, the second announcement is really just more if you are a reader of my books, and I don't know if you are because this is more of a booktube channel than a like all about me channel, but I've discovered from reading 300 books, most of them are cozy mysteries that I actually that's not really what I love writing. And most of the cozy mysteries, for some reason, I would get frustrated because they were so slow, nothing was happening. And I would talk to other cozy mystery fans and they would be like, I loved that book. It was the greatest book ever. And I was like, but nothing really happened. And there was like a lot of like bonding or whatever between characters that didn't advance the plot and don't really matter. And maybe it'll like help out in book seven or eight later on. But I was kind of bored. And so I found myself more wanting to read thrillers. Now, the original reason I wanted to write in the first place is because I really love Janet Ivanovich books. And I was told at the time that like, she's so great, you can't write as good as her, so don't even try. And then I had gone to a romance writers uh, group and everyone was so friendly. And I was like, this is such a great group and I might as well just try writing romance, like why not? And then I went down the romance writing path and then, but I'd always throw a dead body in there or something else. So I was like, you know what? I really just wanna write, write mysteries. And so I switched over and I was gonna go back to like what I wanted to write, but then I was told, again, some more bad advice that, you know, cozy mysteries are the only mysteries that are selling right now. You, No one is ever going to buy your book. And so again, I just listened to those voices because I'm not really that well-versed in the publishing industry. I'm not that experienced. And so I just relied on the advice of others and everybody who writes really wants their book to succeed and they want to be like a huge big time author. And so, and I did, I love, I absolutely like just get so excited about everything that comes on the Hallmark Movies and Mysteries channel. And those are basically cozy mysteries. So I was like, well, sure, why not? That's going to be a fit. And so, you know, fast forward now after reading all these cozies this year, which is why I said it is a, an excellent use of my time for reading that many books in the genre that I now know with 101% certainty this time that I really just want to do what I originally wanted to do in the first place, which is I want to write more grittier Janet Ivanovich style mysteries. And if no one buys them, then no one buys them. I don't really care. I really just want to spend time writing the things that I really want to write. Now, if you are a book fan, first of all, thank you so much for reading any of my books. I so appreciate you. I'm so grateful. Uh, honestly, I didn't think anyone would read any of my books. <laughs> so the Frost and Misfortune series, which is about Lucky, my cat, I will, I still have books in that series. I'm trying to finish that out with six books. I have another one coming out hopefully in January, maybe February. I have to check with Melissa, who is my publisher, but it's going to be really great because I put one of Emmy Lynn's characters from her uh, Dogs and Donuts series 
into my next book. And she put Ava, my main character, into her next book with the Dogs and Donuts series. So we're really excited. We're trying to release those books like within a month of each other. And uh, it was, it's going to be a really fun crossover. We're both like reading each other's books, making sure the voice sounds okay. Uh, so very, very excited about that. I will have more information about that when I get a publishing date. Now, the other thing, um, no, those are those were all my announcements. Those are my two big announcements. So the first one is no more like regular videos on here unless they're related to book club. So just live streams going forward and then the book selections that Courtney and I have for you to choose from for us to read for the next month. And obviously I will be on Patreon. And then for the second announcement is that I will be finishing out my cozy mystery series with Melissa. So we'll have six books total in Frosted Misfortunes by the time it's done. And then I will be moving on to my dream books, which are the, the grittier Janet Ivanovich style books. So very excited about that. Um, and yeah. So I think 2022 is going to be an amazing and awesome year. So thank you so much for being here and subscribing to this channel and watching videos. And don't worry if you love Cozy Mysteries, we will still be talking about Cozy Mysteries because I will be doing all of the live streams with Courtney. We'll still shuffle back and forth between her channel and my channel. And you know, I mean, never say never. I might just pop in with a review video or something else along the way because I just feel like it and it might be fun. But I am going to mostly focus on writing next year and I am going to focus on Pretty Fabulous next year because I really didn't spend any time on that business at all, if I'm being completely honest, uh, for this year. So I'm going to just shift things for next year. All right, so let's get into my end of year wrap up and the books that I read. All right, let's start here. I have 300 books as my goal and I made it. So let's look at what that looks like. I actually imported this data into Storygraph. If you've never used it, it's interesting. The stats are a little off, um, obviously, because it was an import. Even though I read two, uh, 300, it only says 267. Not sure where that came from. Moods, I really just don't think this is very accurate. Um, but anyways, if we move on to pace, I don't know if this means the pace that I read the books at or the pace of the books. I believe it's the pace of the books, like fast pace versus medium slow. Again, I don't really put a lot of stock into that because some of those cozy mysteries were so slow and boring. Like I was like, this would be more exciting to watch grass grow than continue reading this book. Um, it's another reason why I had a revelation that like, I'm not gonna be writing cozy mysteries anymore. Uh, okay, page number, it looks like I'm, I'm right about split between 300 and less than 300. And over here, it's mostly fiction, which is true. Um, I do enjoy that much more than nonfiction. Genres, this does look accurate, mostly mysteries, then romance, thrillers, uh, fantasy, and then just tiny little bits of everything else. And format, this is 100% inaccurate. In fact, it even says 101 books don't have a format. I didn't pay any attention to that when I registered books in Goodreads. I simply just entered a book and didn't care. So this is really, to be honest, it's probably 99% audio and then 1% digital. And then I didn't read a single print book this year. Uh, this is definitely true, like my top 10 most read favorite authors, Gina Lamana. She writes very much humorous mysteries, so not a lot of gritty cursing or thrillers, but I just find them enjoyable. I would say she's closely related to Janet Ivanovich books, which are my favorites. And this is deceiving because it says three, but I mean, if Janet Ivanovich put out 100 books every year, I would read 100 Janet Ivanovich books every year. Uh, Robert J. Crane, this is just like this was the young adult series about a succubus and it was amazing like i could not, he does such a great job with cliffhangers i kept reading it and then finally it like i don't even know it says here i only read seven books that's not true i think i read like 23 books in the series there's like 50 i think in this series at some point i was like i need to stop <laughs> and so anyways um amanda flower i love amish mysteries she actually has a ton of those so that looks about accurate uh, Richard Preston, I wish he was still writing books. I really, this is kind of like a reread of books. Like I found one of them from like years ago, the Cobra event, and he talks about just Ebola outbreaks. I think only one of them was fiction, the Cobra out event, and then the rest of them were all nonfiction. They're fascinating if you like reading that story or that subject matter. Uh, always, James Patterson is like always a goodie. Like whenever I was like, oh, I just need a good book to like that I know won't let me down, I always go to James Patterson. Tarquin Hall is a British author who writes Indian mysteries and they are 
amazing. So if he wrote more books, I would read more books, but I think he only has like four out. Maybe, I think, actually, I think it's five. Again, I don't know why the count is off, but they are so clever. They have multiple mysteries going on, and they're not like straight up mysteries when a cozy, you're just trying to figure out who did it. These are like, how in the world did this happen kind of mystery, and you're like, I'm fascinated both to find out how it occurred, how they did it, and also who did it. Um, Terry Goodkind, he came out with a new series. I think everyone knows the uh, Legend of the Sword series, uh, The Truth Seeker. And so this is by far one of my favorite fantasy authors. He came out with a new grittier thriller about a woman who could just sense serial killers and rapists, and she was going around just single-handedly taking them out. It was the best series ever. Like, it was Buffy on steroids as an adult and I am so sad that Terry Goodkind passed away. I don't know if anyone knows this like a couple years ago and so that was the last series he was working on before he passed away and of course everybody wants to know where the manuscript is that he was halfway finished with. Uh, however, his uh, significant other is not giving that away. I don't know. So I don't know if like it sounds like no one else is going to keep writing that series but it was amazing. Um, Janet Ivandrich, I already talked about her. Jill Shalvis, I love her romances. They're sweet, but not like, but there's sex in them, but not over the top sex. And they're always like a good, satisfying read. Victoria Laurie writes a really great series of paranormal Abby Cooper. The only problem is I'm not really too much into paranormal cozy. So she had another series on a life coach that was a cozy. And I was like, well, let me go ahead and try this out. So I actually really did like that series. I like her writing. So this is very indicative, this top 10 of like authors that I just absolutely love. Uh, again, over here, it kind of, I guess I started out kind of slow in January, picked it up in February, almost a book a day. And then it looks like I just went crazy in March with uh, like 29 books. Same thing in July with 26 books. And then I, here it is. Yeah, October 32 books. I only read Cozy Mysteries in October and that was it and absolutely nothing else. So that pretty much like confirmed to me and this whole year, like I'm so glad I did this reading because it confirmed that like Cozy Mysteries are just not my thing. That is like not at all what I want to write. I liked writing my current Frosted Mystery series, but I really want to write more grittier stuff like with some sex and drugs and alcohol in them. So I'm kind of switching switching gears. Um, over here, November, where's the books read? 37. These were nonfiction books. These were that, I did a wrap up of all the habit tracker books, which actually that video was not very popular. I guess no one here is like interested in nonfiction either. Uh, but those were like quick, easy reads. And then star reviews. This actually isn't very, well, I guess it's kind of accurate. I tried doing my own charts inside of Excel because I had the whole CSVs file and then I downloaded. So basically there's a spike of, I had a lot of fives, like 102 books that I just absolutely love this year. Um, some middle of the road. And then like, there were like 61 books I clearly just like hated. <laughs> and so, and then some that I think, I give things to two where I'm like, ah, uh, I hated it, but they had some redeeming qualities or the plot was good or the character was okay or something like that. So, um, I read mostly traditional. So the blue is trad and the white is indie. And you can see it's like 91%. And then over here, years published. Um, so anything that was prior, like a new release, it looks like it was 48. So a good percentage, I would say, of the year. And then the rest were pre-2021. And then over here, anything that was written in 22 and like, yeah. So basically within this last decade uh, was the majority of the books that I read. There's 294. And I only read 16 that were, you know, published prior to 2010. So it kind of follows like, I don't know, this if this is indicative for authors, like it's tough to have an old book because maybe people won't read it because it sounds like that's just something. And I'd never really purposely planned that. And maybe it's because the covers just looked old and they were unattractive and that's why I didn't read them. But that's a wrap of all the graphs.